hi viewers here we will uh, discuss about the example of k means clustering algorithm here i have taken uh, 16 samples data set which is having the two features one is x1 and another one is x2 there is no label output because which is unsupervised learning so label will not be given for the unsupervised machine learning algorithm here we have to form k number of clusters k number of clusters for that we should give the input value for the k so initially i am giving 3 as the input for k so i am taking randomly 3 uh, data samples as a cluster centroids 3 data samples as a cluster centroids so here this one is acting as a cluster centroid 2 this one and 3.8 9.9 is assigning as a cluster centroid 1 and cluster centroid 3 is 6.2 and 18.5 so this is the first step then we have to calculate the distance between all the data points to this cluster cent cluster centers this cluster centers then whichever whichever cluster center is near to this whichever cluster center is near to this then for to that we will assign that data point to that corresponding cluster center like that again we have to calculate the distance between the cluster center at 3 to all the data points all the data points then whichever data point is close to the cluster center 3 with that data point will be assigned to that cluster center 3 so for that we will use the distance metric euclidean distance euclidean distance metric so based on that here i am calculating for the distance for the each and every cluster centroid so this is with respect to cluster centroid 1 this is for cluster center 2 cluster center 3 so the data point 6.8 and 12.6 distance is having uh, having to the this this one this one is the cluster center right 6 so 6.8 uh, minus uh, 3.8 6.8 minus 3.8 then 12.6 uh, sorry uh, here we are we have to use the distance metric euclidean distance so when you are applying the euclidean distance you will get you will get the value these things right so when you are forming this you are getting the distance metric in this format then then we have to assign the each and every data point to the cluster center whichever cluster center is closest to the given data point so here the 6.8 and 12.6 is close to the cluster center 1 cluster center 1 you look at here so the here the data point 6.8 and 12.6 6.8 and 12.6 approximately uh, it will come here it will come here right so it is uh, this one this one right which is belonging to the cluster center right? 2 and up on the next data point 8.4 6.9 8.4 under 6.9 okay 8.4 this may be a 6.9 so here this will be the 8.4 and 6.9 so here which is belonging to the cluster center 2 cluster center 2 so like that whichever distance is low then that data point will be assigned to that cluster for example uh here the 6.0 and 19.9 so 6.0 and 19.9 so this data this data point is having value 1.4 which is belonging to the cluster centroid 3 so which is belonging to the cluster centroid 3 so whichever uh, cluster center is closest to the data point then the data point will assign to that uh, closest cluster center after that here we are checking how many data points to each and every cluster cluster 1 is having 9 data points which is given here and cluster 2 is having 4 data points so which is also given here and cluster 3 is having 3 data points now we have to calculate the mean for each and every cluster members each and every cluster members so here 
for example i will take the cluster number 3 cluster number 3 so for this i will calculate the mean so here the 6.0 and 19.9 6.2 and 18.5, 7.6 and 17.4. When I am applying that uh, as a average, I will get 6.6 .6 and 18.6. So this is the uh, position, uh, whichever data point is available that will be acting as a cluster center. So which is that uh, closest to that? So this this data point is okay this data point is closest to that value so this will act as a cluster center so this should be repeated this should be repeated until here the cluster centers should not be changed another one criteria is the cluster members should not move from one group to another group right so in this under this criteria right if anything is not changed then we will stop the algorithm otherwise if if any uh, after getting the new cluster member if after getting the new cluster member there is the possibility of moving one data point to another cluster one data point to another cluster if any movement is there we have to uh, uh, increase the iterations we have to increase the iterations if anything is not updated that means clusters cluster numbers are not uh, moving from one cluster to another cluster and a cluster centers also if it is not changing then we can stop the algorithm and one more important thing is how can we choose the k value how can we choose the k value for that there is one of the method elbow method so which is uh, based upon the inertia method so here which is following the sum of squared distance of the data points right like a euclidean distance so here we will uh, apply the iterations so mostly we will start from the 1 to 9 number of iterations when you are starting that you look at that this is the iner inertia here you are changing the k values so you look at that which is uh, this curve this curve is looking like a elbow looking like a elbow wherever that elbow kind of appearance is there so that value will be the better k value that value will be the better k value so this one so this is appearing as a elbow so that elbow value will be selected as a better k value so this will give you better performance model there is some limitations in the k means algorithm here uh, there is the possibility of uh, converging to the local optimal solution but the local optimal solution may not be a better solution and initially we have to feed the k value as a input and one more thing it will not handle the noisy data or outliers for example if my have the data like this one data is in the long distance so this is outlier actually but in clustering it will act it will be uh, assumed as a one of the cluster one of the cluster so this is uh, the outliers are unable to handle in the k means clustering and one more thing important one it will not handle the categorical value you see my data set is only having the numbers numerical values numerical values it will not handle the categorical value because we are applying the distance metric so it will not handle the categorical value so with this i conclude the session thanks for watching